Welcome back to the channel. It is Easter Sunday and I have been working in the garage all weekend and I have to apologize, but I didn't record the majority of what I did this weekend, which was work on a car. It was time sensitive and it takes like three times as long to do anything whenever you're trying to set up and record. So I'll just walk you through what took me pretty much all weekend. And then once we get this wrapped up, which we're pretty much done, then we can get to the good stuff, which is pulling the RRS back into the garage and finishing up some of the graphics and um, getting it ready. Because as you can see, I don't have a sweatshirt on, the heater isn't going, it is nice. It's like 65 degrees. That means the season is almost here. We get to do some riding soon. So let's just get to it. I'm going to show you what I've been doing. So this is my Honda that I've been working on. I drive it back and forth to work. Um, we did a little refresh on the front end. I got it up on the jack stands. So this is basically what we did. We took out the old rusted out heat shields. We took or dust shields. We took the upper and lower ball joints, the control arms, basically a whole front end refresh. I got this tire on. So let's grab this light and we'll go look at some of the work that we did. This is how I set up my workspace. I have the tire, I have all my tools that I need right here, and then some more tools over here. And then this is what I did. So for the control arms on a 2000, I think it's 2006 through 2011 Honda Accord, um, coupe or sedan, this is the V6. You have to, in order to take the ball joints out, Ball joints are down here, right there. You have to take out the entire spindle and the strut. There's a wishbone down there and your sway bar links. And I got a whole kit that had this entire control arm right here with new rubber bushings here and back there. And then we got the new Monroe quick strut, the upper ball joint, and then I showed you the lower ball joint and the tie rod ends, inner and outer. Inner was good, so I just did the outer. Um, but yeah, both sides. Took me about three hours on the other side. And then this side, I was, you know, activities all weekend, interrupted halfway through. But we got it done so now we're about ready to figure out which hose is leaking that transmission from oil from the cooler put a hose clamp on it and then we can get it off these blocks and get it out of the garage and get the bike in here so let's go ahead and clean this freaking mess up I'll show you guys what I was working on. Can't really see it from here, but there is a hose. Right there with that hose clamp that was cut too short. The guy that I got this from said that they replaced the radiator and the transmission coolant lines or whatever. That transmission line that goes to the cooler that clamp wasn't the hose was cut too short as you can see it should be all the way up against that little nub right there but it's like 
I don't know, half a centimeter short. And the clamp was right on the hose nub and it was leaking slowly, very slowly. This car has been on this rack for two days and that's what fell out of it. So it's just a quick drip, but it's annoying and I'm losing transmission fluid. So what I did was we pulled, I pulled that back. Here, let me zoom back out. Anyways, I pulled that back, this shroud, and then pulled the hose clamp back and put a pipe clamp on it and tightened it down. And that should not drip. I'll check it in a couple days, but it should clean up all this shit because it's running down through this mud flap all down the edge of the car and doesn't smoke or anything, but it's dripping all over the driveway and it's annoying. decals off and keep working. I'm going to start with the shroud. Fly. 
I am the last one to die. pretty well black and white carbon came in a kit with this mounting plate which replaces the front wheel spacer so we got to pull that front tire off slide the axle out put this in place of the spacer that way this can mount up to the uh, rotor cover Okay, so they give you the mounting kit and some instructions. Basically, you mount the mount to the disc and the disc slides in. This takes the place of the factory spacer. Um, slide the axle straight through there. Might want to grease that a little bit. This one, oddly enough, came with one of the bolts. Didn't wasn't threaded, so I just had a bolt kit and I had to replace it. I'll probably throw a washer. Actually, no, I, yeah, because it comes through right there. I'll have to pull that out and throw a washer on it. But Loctite them because there's no Loctite on them. Make sure you Loctite them in there. Otherwise, they're going to vibrate out. Then we got to pull the front tire off and slide it on.
All right, guys. That is it for the graphics kit. And the only thing I have, honestly, I'm going to ride it for a little bit without the wraparounds until I work out those grips. I think you can pop the ends off of these grips too, just like any other grip. But I'm going to switch to some OD grips and put the um, full bark busters on there at some point. I have a bark bust, like a full circa bark buster kit. Other than that, we'll rock that chain out for a little bit and. After probably this season, I'll swap that chain out for a gold chain and a black sprocket. And I think that's pretty much it. The bike looks freaking nasty. So I'm super pumped at the way it turned out. Now I just got to go get it dirty. So we have one more surprise. And I can't do it tonight because it's super late so i think i'm just gonna take care of the stuff i gotta do tomorrow and we will uh we'll install it but the last thing we have to do is i want to do a sound test with this pipe on it and then i got that fmf baby hell yeah so we'll do a before and after with it tomorrow i may get the handlebar mount off the mountain bike and put it on the bike and go for a ride with it and then go for a ride after uh, but we'll just see how much time we have worst case i mean either regardless i'll end up putting the pipe running the pipe on video on the camera with this factory silencer that's super restrictive and has a stupid little nipple on it and then we'll install the FMF power core and see how well it sounds, breathes, and how much torque increase I have. I have a feeling it's going to wake this bike up quite a bit. So until tomorrow. Okay, video with the stock exhaust. Go ahead, Hanky. Turn this? Yeah, just push this button. Go. So what you want to do is pull out these inserts and this one right here, put them in the new pipe sections and then you can reinstall. Just make sure when you do this that you put a little anti-seize on the inside of the pipe right here. That way it's not such a bitch getting off if I ever want to take it off. Okay, we got the new pipe on. Let's fire it up.
right, guys. Well, that's going to be a wrap for this video. We got the bike all set up. We got the graphics kit done. We got the pipe on. We got the discard. Should be ready to rip now. I'm just got to wait for the weather to get better again. Season for the camping situation up north where the trails are is supposed to open in about two weeks. And after last week, the weather was pretty promising but as you can see it's a little chillier today um, we're expecting some snow tomorrow and um, it's about 40 degrees right now so we definitely took advantage of the good weather yesterday and this past week to get the project done so let's just think spring hope for some warmer weather and we'll see you guys on thanks the trail. for watching like subscribe we'll see you next time thanks guys